What's good? I am Yish. This is Yish in your ear. So I recently acquired an MPC 4000, been using the DAWs for, I don't know, the better part of 15, 20 years of the 30 plus years I've been doing this. And <clears throat> just as a background, I had an S5000, I had a Z4, now I got, again, the MPC. I'm familiar with the access system through all three of these. Now, the first one, and, and, and let me preface this, right? I'm not gonna do anything as far as installation is concerned because it's just gonna drag the video on longer than it needs to be. This is where Google is your friend. And if you have any questions and, and are running into some issues with getting this thing running, let me know. I will gladly help in the comments, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install VirtualBox, the latest version. All right, then we're gonna add the sampler's USB port and the shared folder in the VirtualBox and I'll show you that in a few. Then we're gonna install Windows XP. I'm using Micro XP because it's 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 been gutted. It has all of the bloat and everything out of it, so much so that there's a lot of stuff you can't do, but we'll only be using Axis and FL Studio and the shared folders for this, so you don't need anything extra. Then we're gonna install Guest Editions, which pretty much allows you to do some of the seamless stuff. It allows the mouse to be seamless with your current operating system. We'll install the USB driver, all right, in the virtual machine. You will install <laughs> the USB driver in the virtual machine's operating system, install Access, and then finally install FL Studio, all right? So those are the things, those are the steps that you're gonna have to do and research if you wanna get this running. It's not complicated at all. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. So this is the setting screen. This is part of the steps that you'll do when you're installing your virtual box. So the two things I want you to make sure that set up is your USB port. Now I have here uh, the, uh, the MPC. So you basically go over here and you add and then it'll give you a list of everything that's installed on your host machine, which is your regular machine. And you select the sampler of your choice, whichever one you have, and that will allow the USB port to be available basically inside of the virtual machine. And you add that here. And then your shared folder for wherever you have your current library. So that allows that folder to be available inside the virtual machine and I have access to all of my samples, right? So those are the two things you wanna make sure is um, set up before you install your virtual software, all right? So you'll install XP, you get it up and running. Make sure that, again, that you install the driver on the virtual machine for the sampler of choice, and you should be good to go, all right? So this is Axis. This is the main screen here, right? You have access, which is the point of the name, to the memory of your sampler. In this case, from now on, we'll be using the MPC 4000. Anytime you hear me mentioning the MPC 4000, just utilize whatever sampler that you have for it, all right? So the memory has the multis, the programs, the samples, and the MIDI folder, all right? Now, in order to get this MIDI folder to show up, because it does not by default, you need to go over to where the icon for your sampler is, and I think both the Z4 and the S5000 and S6000 and the Z8 has MIDI functions in it. But at any rate, you right click on the icon for your particular sampler, you go to preferences, and there's a box that's generally unchecked when you first load this up. You wanna make sure that that's checked, and if necessary, restart access, and you'll get the MIDI files folder. But Maltese, so this is the mixer basically of all of your programs inside your sampler, all right? programs of course this is the programs and you can go in here and, and do deep editing with that which I think is just easier next would be samples right now you can't edit samples directly but you can set an actual audio editor for your sampler um, through here but in this case we won't even need that and then finally for the MPC 4000 alone if you right click on where it says MPC 4000 you have the pad editor let me show you why this is so powerful. First of all, this is the main reason why I'm even using FL Studio is because of this browser, right? This browser is, this is probably one of the best browsers on the market to be perfectly honest and why I stuck with FL Studio for so damn long. 
um, it just makes it so easy to get to manage what sounds you want to use outside of plugins. It, it's, it's beautiful, right? So we got a kick. We'll take the kick, we'll drag the kick, and we'll put it on the pad number two on the first key zone, right? So as you can see, we have that kick on pad two. Now I have a previous kick that I did. So let's go back. Let's find me a hat. I'll grab that and I'll replace that kick that we put. So we have that hat. Let us find us a snare. All right, boom. Easy peasy, gets out of the way. I wish the newer ones had such things in it, but from what I've read, it doesn't. You just get access to the drive. You can swap out the banks up here if you were so inclined to do things by um, key groups, then it would be best to do it here. But even still, um, this is not set up as a key group, it's set up as a, as a drum program. So all of the editing that you do inside of the MPC itself, you can do here. So for instance, this is C sharp one. So if we go to C sharp one and click that, right? There's our kick, kick three, three, same thing, kick three, three. Now we can go in, we can change the level of the kick. We can change the panning of the kick, right? We can change this output. If I wanted to put it to whatever outputs we wanted to put it to, you can change the pitch, the playback, tuning, start, all of that stuff you can do in here. Makes it so much easier to manage your MPC or your sampler, right? And then of course with the multi, as you can see, the meter is moving down here, letting you know that, hey, there's signal coming through here and then you can do your mixing from here, right? As opposed to trying to do it inside of the machine. Beautiful. Some other things that you can do. You can drag and drop into the editor. But let's try. All right, so let's say you had some breaks, right? Edison has a slice function right here that is easy. You right click on it, you can modify how you want the slicing to be. Now, one caveat to this editor, right here it says 16-bit, it also has a 32-bit function. If you load up a sample and it says 32, click this to make it 16-bit. These samples don't support floating point, so you wanna make sure that this says 16-bit. You can then select whatever sample, right, and drag and drop it from here. Now, when you do that and you let go of the mouse, as you can see, it's, it's, it's still like it's stuck. You have to click it a second time and it'll drop it into there. So now we have that, that snare right along with everything else. So you can do all of the editing that you want to do over here in Edison and drag and drop it once it's done and put it right into your, your, your sampler. Beautiful. Now, so let's say we wanted to do some processing, right? All right, that's playing through channel one, but it's going through the master. So what we'll do, we'll go in here, we'll grab, uh, I don't know, some compression. So we have a compressor here. We can trigger this. Throw some compression on it, all right? I'm gonna go to new. I'm gonna hit record. I'm gonna trigger the sample. All right, stop. Now we have the sample with compression on it. I can go to tools, we can go to normalize, hit play. Let us take that, and I'm gonna actually pull this back on top of here because I wanna process some other stuff, right? I wanna throw some reverb on here just to make this evident, right? So let's go to right here, Fruity Convolver. My favorite preset is the 250. And I'm gonna hit that again. And make sure it's on.
And I'm gonna do even another one. Zoom in on that. I'm gonna grab just this snare that has compression on it now. And I'm gonna grab a little bit before it just so we get everything we need. I'm gonna drag that onto here, All right? So now we have that with the reverb. I'm gonna do new. I'm gonna hit record. I'm gonna trigger that. Stop. Now I have this snare with reverb on it. I'm gonna trim it down to just where I want it, right there. And then make sure that this is on 16 bit. I'm gonna drag that to a pad. Now I have that snare in here, All right? Now, if I go to the program editor, this is on E1, right? So if we go to E1, which we have selected right now, you can see, switch that to one shot. Boom. You see, so far I'm not doing a whole lot of button pushing, which can save your buttons on your MPC, right? So the ease of use is awesome. The browser, the slicer, you can do all of that stuff in here and drag and drop to your heart's content where you want what to be where. But that's it, man. I really, really wanted to just highlight, you know, what this thing can give you. It's crazy because it, it, it just, it, it eliminates a lot of the, the button pushing and a lot of the digging that you would have to do with the machine and, and allows you to be a little bit more creative. And not only that, it allows a lot easier processing of plugins on your sample and even with the newer MPCs, um, it's still functional. You don't get the, the great management that you do, you know, with, uh, with the memory of the machine, but you can still do all of your processing and editing and all of that stuff and drop it, drag and drop it right onto the, uh, the folder or the hard drive or to the, the MPC, the one, the X and the live. So even with those, this still can be utilized. As long as you have a USB connection for anything, I think for any sampler that allows you to access the hard drive and have a symbiotic relationship between the computer and your machine, FL Studio is the one to use for sample management. All right, but that's it. This has been Yishinya Ear, showing you how to utilize the access software in a virtual machine with FL Studio. If you are interested in more, you can check out my YouTube channel, Yish In Your Ear. I got mostly software reviews on there and a couple of tracks and whatnot, but stay tuned.